hi everyone welcome back to the studio here on the cliffs in the far north of scotland it's lovely to have you here for the first time or whether you're returning um, to paint along with me as you i guide you through the process of a painting from start to finish as always these sessions are about boosting your well-being and for you to relax and sink into the creative process and for you to create something that resembles anything is a bonus but you will i promise you you will be able to paint by the end of today's session but most importantly it's about relaxation taking in the serenity enjoying my studio it's very peaceful here overlooking the north sea um so yeah, just enjoy the process. Just take a deep breath now. Breathe in and breathe out and just relax and sink fully into your body and forget about everything but right what's in right what's right in front of you, which is hopefully a canvas. Canvases now can be any size. You can have the rectangle or, or square. I'm going to be teaching you from a square canvas, but you can just adapt slightly if you've got rectangular. You can go portrait or landscape, it's entirely up to you. I'm actually wearing this scarf in homage to today's subject, which is a beautiful robin. Uh, where is it gone? There it is. My favourite bird. Um, so let's chat more about robins as we progress today. So I'm just going to take off, it's quite warm in here. Okay, so what you need is your palette. I use at the moment I've got ice cream tubs there's all sorts of disposable things reuse your plastic so if you can get as much use out of this plastic as possible before you put it in recycling is amazing actually a good tip is like if you've got your paints in the tub you can then keep them for as long as you want to spray them with a little bit of water put them in the fridge and they don't dry out as much as they would if you'd left them out acrylics dry really quickly which I'll talk about as we progress so you need your paints the colours that we are using today, which I put in the description, are very basic, uh, which I'm hoping we will be okay with. If, if during the session I realise that we need more colours, I will let you know and put them in the description at the beginning. So the colour I've got is the Cadmium Red. Uh, Cadmium Red, Ultramarine is the blue, and then we've got Titanium White, and then a dark brown dark brown uh, the brown that I'm using is I believe it's a burnt umber and then a cadmium yellow as well we should be able to mix all of the colors from uh, what sat here and you will need some rags so I've just got some kitchen towel hanging around for you to wash your brushes you might want to protect your clothing, which I've not done. Um, am I sitting on it? Probably. Uh, with an apron. Yeah, I mean, acrylics, when it gets onto your clothes, you've got about a five minute window of um, removing it before it dries. And then once it's dry, it's really hard to get off. So I'm just going to put my painting apron on. And you need a selection of brushes. So hopefully you've got that and you will need a jar of water or some sort of container with water to wash your brushes so don't panic just relax and i will get cracking so the two as two images i'm going for today um so have a little look now um that's the first one so that's the shape of the robin that we're gonna uh, create and i'm just in, like inspired by all the beautiful colors that he's got he's fluffy and very detailed so we can play with that but then also um, I'm looking at the light in this one so let's have a just quick look at this one um, it's backlit and it's warmer so as some of you know I'm a, actually a colour therapist as well so I can what I try and do is integrate colour into paintings um, where it will have an effect both on you that's painting but also the viewer um, and it can stimulate different feelings as you look at these paintings so the green is quite, it's not, it's quite a cold green. So um, you can, if you want to use green in your background, please do have a look. You can use all that like, and maybe warm up the greens with yellows and oranges through them. Um, but I'm going more for this warm background here. 
um, which I'll explain as we go along, okay? So you've got your option when we're doing the background. I want, as always, this is your painting and it's your expression. So you now have an image in your mind of how you want your painting to look. Do you want it to be quite photographic? Would you like to incorporate all these different colors into the background? It's entirely up to you. So what we do is take the biggest brush that you have this is my wide brush, it's a three inches and I'm going for, remember I'm going for my warm background so I'm going to dip my brush in the water just to get it wet then I am going into, let's see, I'm going to try to make that warm background colour so brown, just a touch of brown on my brush, is that much on there put that onto my mixing palette and I'm going to go for the other corner of the brush and take a big scoop of white and then we're going to mix those together on the palette here we go, mix, mix, mix oops and we'll just see what colour that brings up yes, it's like a, a peachy brown if you're using the burnt umber you can use raw umber which will make it a little bit darker doesn't matter I'm liking that already. Right, what we need to do is mix that completely together and then I'm just going to add more water into this because we're going to cover the whole of this background in um, this colour. We might have to come back and mix more. Okay, so let's see how we get on. So that's enough for me now. It's like an egg yolk consistency. You don't want it too watery where it's running all the way down and it's just really transparent so egg yolk where it's not you see it's not even running down the brush slightly moving okay so we're going to go from the left or start wherever you want to whatever corner that and then back into this picture i'm just going to look at the composition so we're going to bring it oh yes it's a lovely warm tone and it matches my outfit as you may know if you've done these tutorials before i actually accidentally end up wearing the colours that we are painting um, and I don't know why, I just get drawn to wear the clothes that match the painting for that day you might end up doing that too ok so we're going from the top and I'm just bringing it in from the edges just being mindful that we're going to leave the middle bit a little bit blank if you can to so bring it in from the edges so that it doesn't make it harder for us then to colour in the robin if we've got all that orange underneath him so you, what you do is kind of use the brush uh, the paint thickly on the edges and then thin it down as it comes into the middle we want it to go behind his legs so I'm leaving this gap at the bottom. Do you see the gap that I'm leaving at the bottom? That's for the wood. And again, you can be creative with that. I, the, I'm going to use it as a fence post or the back of a bench. Um, but for you guys, you can have a branch. So again, envisage in your mind what you'd like uh, down here in this bottom section. You can make it easy for yourself. You could have some greenery, um, but whatever you feel would be easy for you to paint but also what would suit your vision for this painting okay so this is the application of the first layer of the background so i'm just making sure we have got that gap in the middle for miss what should we call him um we we'll just call him mr robin i think for mr robin to go into That. Like I said, ac acrylics take about five minutes to dry. Um, my room's quite warm, I've got the heater on, so that should speed up the drying process. If at any stage you need to pause me in this recording, get a hairdryer and blast your painting, please do. Maybe at this stage you might want to. Um, I'm just going to leave that and then I'm going to come down to this bottom section and then come back to this top section as we go. Right, let's not worry about straight lines, we can paint over the top 
get straight afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to put this brush in the pot. Probably don't need that again. Um, and then we are going to go for now, let's say, it's still a wash brush, so let's go just slightly smaller, probably even smaller if you have one, which I think this is the two inch, but if you've got a one inch um, brush, which I have got here, I'm actually going to use this one just for this bottom section. So I've just picked up this one for down here. Let's put that one to the side. Okay, so for down here, again, I'm going to dip my brush in the water. Now, we can use this colour on the palette that we've already got, but we're going to add to it. So now, it is if you want the bench post, bench post, if not, create something branchy, twiggy, and you can just literally run with your imagination, okay? But if you're following my guidance, I've added more brown into that mix. I'm now going to go for a touch of dark blue. Alright, and you'll get now a darker brown colour. I'm just going to go for a touch of oh, uh, purple, sorry, a touch of red to make it more purpley. I just again want to warm it up um, and I'm just going to now mark white because I'm just trying to make it a little bit more purpley lavender. So I'm going touches of blue, touches of red, touches of white to that mix that we already created and now I'm matching it to the picture which I've got over there which is we're ne pretty much nearly there right that's the colour I'm going for it doesn't matter if your paint is not thoroughly mixed because when we're looking at this bench it's got um, wood when you look at wood it's all the colours of the sorry I'm just boiling over here I'm just going to turn one of heating things off um, you've got the grains, you've got all the different colours coming through, so we're just going, you should now be able to like pretty much draw a straight line with your brush, um, let's see how far he comes, I'm going to bring it up slightly, okay, it's as straight as you can get with your free hand, if you wanted to spend hours perfecting this you would mask a straight line um, and you would then measure from the bottom to the top and mask all the way along and so that you're not at an angle I'm probably at an angle because I'm sat at an angle I'm trying to get as straight as possible doesn't matter if it's blending at this stage we'll go back when it's dry and um, we can define that edge okay so bring that down there you go that's the first coat of that bench. Again, we can, as we progress through the painting, come back and add all the detail. So, acrylic, uh, is that straight? We, the way that I teach and the way that I paint in acrylic is that it's many layers. And because acrylic's quick drying, um, it works really well. And then you see all the preceding layers show up as you progress through your painting. Um, I do paint in oils as well and it's a slightly different technique especially if you're using wet on wet where you just can go for it and just put on one layer of paint and, and go for it so but the way I'm working in acrylics with, is with lots of layers so don't be alarmed right now oh gosh it doesn't look like anything it will come I promise you okay so let's put that brush in the pot now we're going to pick up something like a medium sized brush here's one i've got it depends on the size of your canvas um but yeah you're going medium what we do is start with the larger brushes for these washes and then as we progress through the painting the brushes are getting smaller okay so let's just have a look at him i'm just looking here this is quite wet still but i'm actually just going to thin it out with my fingers so that we can, yeah, this bit here is his little breast, his little, uh, that's orange anyway, so that shouldn't matter too much. Like I said, if you want to pause at this stage, use the hairdryer, um, please do. Right, let's see, so we, uh, <laughs> it's painting and talking uh, at the same time that I have to still master. 
So we, oh, okay. okay. Right, dip your paintbrush in the pot. We're gonna go for the brown that we just mixed and it's gonna be quite watery. I'm gonna water it down now because we're gonna sketch over the orange with this watered down paint and it's I'm not touching that color it's what's in there already um and we're gonna I'm gonna bring up his little picture here and we're gonna sketch for the top of his head over here so just follow the picture or follow my brush and we're gonna come over the top Right, and how I always do this, I don't use a pencil um, and I always make sure that the picture matches the dimensions of the canvas. So for example, if we were painting on a rectangular canvas, I would have printed out a rectangular picture and then that helps me visualise exactly where in this canvas uh, the top of the robin's head is in relation to the side. I mean, it's not always perfect and sometimes I have to go back and change angles of things, but it does work uh, and you get better at it. The more you do it, the more you can sort of observe uh, dimensions in, re in regards to the canvas, okay? If you need to plot it out with a pencil, please do. Okay, so what I've done is just sketched that brown. I'm looking at that brown colour above uh, his eye. And now I'm just going to add a touch of brown, uh, darker brown to just that dark, I can't even see it, there is the dark brown into that mix on my palette. And let's just bring his little wing here. We're going to bring that down the side. You see what I'm using now is the tip of the brush, very gently now to sketch, imagining almost like it is a pencil, so that we can plot his little dimensions. He comes out at the side here. He's got a very uh, wide uh, belly, which is lovely. Okay, so let's bring that down. And that comes, let's see, so you see how uh, big his torso is compared to his head so it's bigger and was longer and then it comes right if you imagine there's a halfway line in the middle of this picture so it's kind of yeah it's about there it drops about there I think I'm going to leave that there the rest will be grey and then we'll put in his beak afterwards so I'm quite happy that let's just put I'm waiting for this paint to dry so there's not much we can do up there until that bit's dry what we're going to do now I'm just going to put his picture there is um, we're going to make up the grey, I think. We'll make up the grey for the body. So what we do is go for the mid-tones and we plot in with the mid-tones and then um, as we progress, we put in the light and the dark. Okay, so same brush. Yeah, same brush. I'm just going to dip it in the water and we're going back into this bit here that we've already got on the mixing palette, which is the brown. To that, I'm going to add blue. So I had a little touch on my brush and I've left blue. Then I'm going to go into the white, probably a big scoop of white. And you see it goes grey, hopefully. Let's just see what kind of grey we're looking at. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for a little bit more blue. I want a bluey grey. And then a more white. So think bluey grey. That's us now. Okay, there we go. We've got away from that warm um, colour of the background. So what we are doing today is playing with the warms and the cools, uh, which we can have a look at later when we put his little feathers in. We can put all those lovely blues through. So what I'm trying to do is go for the mid-tone. Yeah, I think that's about right. Just a little bit more blue, maybe. Maybe a little touch more blue. Yeah, um, there we go. So it's more blue, right? Bluey grey. Right. So what I'm doing then is just a little touch of water. We're going to come and... Oh, I need more, more water, right? Keep it very fluid. Think a little bit more like watercolours. 
just because we are sketching and playing and plotting um, and as our painting progresses the paint will get thicker so just keep it lovely fluid keep your brush strokes lovely and light and there we go just little bits of blue in around there but as our like I said as our painting ca carries on our um, the brushes will get smaller and we can bring out all the detail so let's just have a look what's going on down this side with this blue I'm looking at his left flank now um, and just going to play with that shape over there and bring it down there we go it's nice and fluid and let's just see how far that goes out I'm going to bring that out to just looking at the gap that's on that side like I said, it's not an exact science, but we will get the gist of this. You can always tweak it afterwards if you need to make him fatter or thinner. You can always paint over the orange. So we're just going to bring his little undercarriage down. So let's see, it kind of makes a point. Do you see that peak there? Just to the left slightly, isn't it? It's not in the middle. Yes, it's white, but I'm using all this grey that we can then paint over. This is literally just to plot his shape in. Okay. And we'll bring it out that way, over the top of that wing. Okay. Gorgeous colours. I think that's right. It's very difficult at an angle, but I am thinking. Oh, I've probably smudged a bit there. But right, so colour that in. Go over that orange. Don't worry if you can still see orange, because as we progress, the paint will get thicker, and you'll be able to blot all of that out. This is just us sketching it in, and then make sure you've got his little corner up here. It comes up like that. Okay. That's us. I think we've got the right shape. Yeah. Um. Let's just see how long his legs are. Maybe just a little bit down here, and then his legs won't be so long. We don't want him to have massive long legs. And just see what's happening here. Just, I'm just now um, just bringing him down slightly because I'm thinking about his legs. Yes, I think that's us. Uh, now, yep, still using that brush, just a little sketch, 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 bringing that blue through. And he's lovely already. That's still a little bit wet up there, so I'm not going to go up there. But we can now put in the, um, his little red and orange breast. Let's just make sure we have a shape here where he comes up and then we have an idea of where that beak's going to go. Yep. Okay, so just finish your left hand side here doesn't matter I've got bits of orange that haven't been painted but I will talk you through the background later let's also we always think well because we are doing these quickly um, while well, I'm recording quickly these sessions so whilst I'm here I'm always going to guide you with what's on the brush and we have this blue on the brush so let's now already start thinking if you're on the bench and my paint is so watered down, it's like watercolour, I've got that blue on the brush, I'm now going vertically, horizontally, uh, this way, I always get those two confused, forwards and back, from left to right, um, with this blue over the brown, and yes, I think my paint is probably not dry properly, but so it's picking up bits of grain even further, which is amazing, so we're already bringing texture out. Okay, so just think of that already, oops, and now look, his little legs coming down without me having to do anything. So that was my paint being too um, fluid at that point, so it started to, if it does that, just get your finger, you can get some rag, and do not worry, you can always paint over any mistakes, any runs like that, we can always do once it's dry, okay? So I'm just front, uh, left to right. With this brush, still on that brush, getting some of that blue through that wood. Okay. 
and that will dry by the time we come back down to that uh oh, what's happening now all these runs and stuff really don't matter at all it all adds to the painterly effect i love all that texture that's coming through so we are painting something that's got lots of texture so it really doesn't matter um right we're gonna go now and paint his little let's blot in his breast his beautiful breast I'm just wondering what brush. I think we can go for the same brush. I'm just going to give that one a quick wash because we get rid of all that blue. Oops. And then give it a wipe. Just get it clean. Okay. So. We need to start from scratch. So either go to, uh, I mean, mixing the colour from scratch, not the painting. Um, so find a little section either on your mixing palette or I'm just going for a different mixing palette. I've got lids here, lids galore. And yeah, we're gonna, so we've got a clean brush and a clean section of our mixing palette. So just dip my brush in the water, make sure it's got a little bit of water. And then I'm going into red, that much on the brush. Then I'm going into yellow. Yeah, so we want orange. So little touches of yellow uh, through the red until you can, yeah, there we go. Till you get to an orange, there we go. And again, don't worry if it's not exact, so we can add bits of red through his breast, bits of yellow, bits of white. We just want a mid orange. Adding water, and then we uh, again. I'm just sketching now with the brush. So we're going to bring it down. Just follow my little directions here of this brush. So even now we're thinking about texture. That little plumage coming down down here but it doesn't come right to that bottom so we will go back and add white back up through there so let's just bring it here lovely colours already a gorgeous subject to paint I think we should do more birds there's such beautiful birds out there aren't there with all these different colours I don't know if I said at the beginning um, so here in Scotland um, in the summer we are garden you may have heard on recordings before the gardens teeming with like starlings really noisy flocks of birds that we feed in the winter they will disappear but it's because it's so windy that uh, there's no shelter for them but I do end up feeding a couple of robins um, that come and peck at the if I put the feed down on lower ground then they can come and get it and it's an absolute delight to watch them seeing that flash of red as it's like in the bushes is yeah it always brings me comfort uh and i've got a robin just sat there as i paint my friend uh, made a if i can get it for you my friend made a felt uh robin it just watches me and it just i think it brings comfort because they are they do symbolize uh people that have passed over and for me, um, I always just think of my grandma when um, when I see these robins and I do, it just brings so much comfort. And I'm sure it's the same for a lot of people as well. It's just, it's just something so warm and comforting about them, let alone the noise that they make, which I'm going to play you uh, just later on. It's that beautiful call as well. It's so pretty. Yes, I'm definitely a robin fan. So, I'm um, sorry, as I'm chatting, there's just paint going on but it's literally just that orange and I'm, blind, I'm trying to blend it into what we've done already so just over that orange that dirty orange that we had in the background just bring it up here just following all the little colors that he's got over here in his picture okay then all of that is going to be blue let's just bring some of that through there 
why is there a gap there? I think that should be a bit of orange there too. We can always put more blue through there. And that's that. And then what's happening here? Maybe just bring that down into his blue there. Very sketchy. But we can bring more white up. Let's see, this drawing is still a little bit wet there. So we could, whilst that is, yeah, whilst he's drying his little middle off, let us um, go back to the background and just put our little creative touches into this background. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, on. Right, let's just think about our backgrounds, how we want our background. So when I'm now visualising him uh, and his painting, I'm seeing lots of light, like I'm seeing gold coming through, I'm seeing like gold twigs behind, which I will play with. So what I do in these recordings is teach you for maybe about an hour, maybe about an hour and 15 minutes, and I give you the basics, but then I encourage you to go away and put your finishing touches to these paintings and to, for you to just find your creative voice, okay? Which is what I, I do as well. So I turn off the recording and then I can sit for an hour or two and just bring my finishing touches, which means it's brilliant because all, we all create something different, right? So we're not all trying to literally copy me uh, stroke by stroke. It's for you to actually put your little voice into this painting as well. So... With that in mind, let me think about this background. So I'm going to uh, go up slightly in brushes because we're going back to the big background. When we're doing the him, he'll get, he will get our brushes and get some more. So I've gone up to a chunky uh, brush. What I'm going to do is you probably use this orange that's on the mixing palette. I am going to add some brown. Yeah and maybe a touch of blue here we go I'm on here so I'm adding brown touch of blue I'm just thinking about that background and I want him to be kind of backlit so we need a, like a dark colour behind brown uh, it was a touch of white let's go back to the there we go okay so there we are it's like a darker than what we've used already maybe it's matching his head and I'm going to add water to that mix and now I've got gaps here so I'm just filling in these gaps and I'm just literally going to add lips so let's think about what would be in the background but we don't want the background to be defined unless you want to spend hours like really perfecting it um, which you can do but I for me the main focus is going to be Mrs. Mr. Robin but I want some hint of character in this background. So I'm just literally playing with these brush strokes, seeing what's happening. Just have a little dibs and dabs. And this will all be refined afterwards. And I will probably bring some metallics through, um, add some gold, add some shimmer. But this is, you will, this is how you can build up this background, all right? So I'm just giving you little hints of what you can do you can add like literally you can have that green if you want that green running through then um you use that green so let's just put in at the moment some of that background and you're putting it over your first layer of that background but you can literally do this and go back and add more colors more detail now that we've put that first down. Oh gosh, it, it looks awful, doesn't it? I, I completely hear you. <laughs> In that you go, oh gosh, it looks like nothing. But it does come together, I promise you it comes together. Texture. Okay, so what I'm going to do whilst we're on this bit is play you. The, oh, there you go. <laughs> That is a robin.
Ja. Come in. Bradley. me adding texture all through that background I don't I have no idea you know it's not definite no idea what's happening but it is something's happening hopefully you can hear okay we might come back to Mr Robin it's very loud <laughs> um yeah so just have fun just let the brush do what it wants to do see what happens don't be scared you can always rectify anything and define anything and this is how the whole creative process is a journey it's a journey we go on we have to be brave we have to step out and we never learn if we don't try which is the motto in life as well for uh, yeah just be brave i have people saying to me um well, i'd love to paint along with you i'd love to join your live art classes but i'm fearful and I think sometimes it's just about taking the plunge, isn't it? It's about uh, just literally feeling that fear, but not letting the fear stop you. Feel the fear and do it anyway. I read that years ago. I can't remember who the author is, but it's so true. Like there's so much in life that we're fearful of, but um, we'll never grow or find the ultimate joy unless we overcome that fear and that's today's lesson <laughs> right uh that's me for now on that background my little his little he's still wet so if you need to now give him a little blast i might do that in a bit i'm just going to come and do his head again and we'll see how much actually two seconds sorry now quickly with that brush before you put it down and with that brown let's just bring that through the bench a little so you can just bring some little highlights of that blue that brown through going back and but not so much so you've just got touches of it coming through and there we go and we're just building up the texture on that as well okay Right, that brush is going in the pot. Now we're going to go into more detail of him. So my brush now gets smaller. So this is still, it's not tiny. I'm going to show you a small, tiny brush. That's like tiny and then we're at medium, smallish right now. So into that brown on my mixing palette, which was here. Um, we are going to add brown. We're going to add blue. Brown and blue. Now I've made a dark brown up here. I'm matching, matching it to the picture. Just to get, I've added a touch of white. Yeah, and just a touch more white. There we go. And maybe a touch more blue. See, that colour's coming. Yes, that's that. So there we go. It's like a bluey uh, brown with some white in it I think that's exact, as exact as I can get um, right now we literally have a little play with his plumage over the top of his head we start building this colour the paint gets thicker so you don't have to water it down so much now and you should have the outline sketched in there already for the shape of his head. Just follow your mapping already. And I'm using the side of the brush. You can use the tip of the brush. And bring his plumage down. There we go. 
bring that down there yes it's coming I'm just adding a little bit more water over here and we're going to bring all that dark brown down to see he's got um, it comes down to the top of his head here okay maybe a touch more blue I need in my palette let's get it a little bit darker yeah Right, and what we'll do then is just bring some of that down under here. So I'm again very sketchy. Same colour I was just using, bringing it down and just adding texture as we go. Filling in that white bit that was just sat there. Over, hopefully if yours is dry very much now you can just keep adding. Forward. Mine's a little bit wet which is fine because it's just adding and blending and what else we're going to bring that again right now i'm just going to touch more darker and bluer into that mix over here going back to that dark gray i think we need it a bit darker this time so it's a bluey gray a little bit of white through yeah and then water and we're going to now start bringing all that blue out through here if you want to make it a little bit greyer, add more of that brown through. Tip of the brush, brush strokes, thinking about feathers as we paint. Yeah? So, blending into what we've done, bringing out his little feathers. Direction of the feathers, even as we're painting, bring it outwards. Bring it outwards. Right, remember um, if you guys are just feeling overwhelmed at this stage with all of this, just pause me whenever you need to, right? I've been doing this 12, 13 years, uh, every day painting and it's like second nature. But if you've just begun, um, yeah, it's a lot to take in, it's a lot to think about, I understand that, so y these tutorials are for you to just literally do in your own time, so don't try and keep up if you don't want to, if you are keeping up, brilliant, it really doesn't matter, whatever you can manage. And uh, remember you can share these pictures to the Facebook group which is Haven House Artis. Um, after you are finished if you want to if you want to share you want to just send them to me that would be lovely so that i can see what you've been up to i'd love to know where you are in the world uh, we've got a lot of people now that are tuning in all over the world um so i'd love to know where you are if you've got any subjects that you think would be amazing for you to paint along um to create paintings from then let me know if there's any locations in and around here, the highlands of Scotland, um, in Case Ness, if there's any particular places or animals or beaches that you would like to be uh, to paint, then just let me know and we'll see what I can do for you. Okay, so I'm still on that blue, just now bringing it into the yellow, very sketchy. Okay, let's see what else he needs. I'm actually now bringing that blue up into the orange up here because I'm seeing dark in the dark patches what we want to try and do is create him as a 3d little bird as well so we've got shadow underneath which we can use this blue to create shadow and we're going to have all the lovely warm bright bits at the top so let's just bring that over I'm going to use my fingers just to blend up here as well so just Bear in mind that we want this undercarriage to be in the shadow. But still, do you see how like so light my paint goes on, but then I use my finger to rub it off very delicately. And we just paint over all those um, layers that we've already done now, so that's how we can work. Okay, how's it coming? It's coming, isn't it? Okay. That's the blue. I'm seeing now that we've got, let's just blend him over here, bring it around his eye a little. Okay. 
and what's happening. That's white down there. Good. Happy. Uh, <laughs> she says, until we put the eye in and the eye goes in a completely wrong direction or wrong place. What we're going to do now with this brush, with the blue, is draw in his beak. Um, so let's have a look. I'm holding the picture up for you to have a look at as well. You're going to have to gauge from my picture, from my brush, where it goes and what angle. See what angle it's going? It's going up slightly. We don't want massive beaks. We don't want tiny beaks. Uh, what's the angle? It's going up and it's got a little curve. And then we're going to come down the back side of it and bring it into the head. There we go. Now, if you always, you can always make that bigger. I'm bringing all of that blue in. There we go. And we can. I'm just blending it into the orange. We can play around with that if we need to. It's your first attempt. If it needs to be bigger, longer whatever mine probably is completely um the wrong size as well so it may need adjusting probably no i think what we're going to do is add the red and the yellow we'll go back to the eye okay the legs we need to do right let's keep keep going with this brush i'm going to wash that brush wash the blue off and then let's see right oh yes going to bring out some lovely red so I'm going straight oh, straight into the red if I can get that there right straight into it I'm back into this mixing palette I had a section of orange so I'm going to mix in the red through that orange just to make it a little bit more uh, orangey and then here we go lovely red coming through now so same effect with this brush bringing all that feathers down Get to get to get to with that brush. Nice. Okay. Lovely. And remember, we're not even on the smallest brush that we use. This is us still adding colour when we get to our smallest brushes is when we can actually have a real play and start putting in all our little final touches nice okay so there's red there i'm seeing red there let's make sure we've got that coming through and then there's red up here so i'm going above the beak and bringing it down to the beak And then just making room for his eye, looking at the angle, bringing that down to there. We can add more orange through there, and then I'm seeing more red. Um, or just here, there's a touch of red here, which we can blend out with orange afterwards with a little brush. Maybe touches of red through here, just down here as well. white down there hasn't he? Um, just get that there, that's the red bit. Knowing his eyes gonna go round about in there. Okay. And then more red. I'm gonna then bring out that fiery yellowy orange too. So I'm just bringing the red up here called a Robin Redbreast, we need red in there. Just a little sketches over here, bringing that out. Okay, right, yeah, isn't that enough? Let's now go back to the orange, so to that red, I just touched my nose, got paint on my nose probably, right, yellow into the orange, into that red, I'm gonna add lot of yellow here on my mixing palette okay. 
Yes, okay, so it goes now more yellow than orange. We're going the other way. But still has a touch of orange running through and red running through. So you get a lot of yellow loaded up into there. Yeah. And now just a little water on my brush. Right, I think it's not what I'm gonna do is go more yellow. Actually, I've gone onto a separate uh, section of my palette so I'm just going bright yellow now a little touch of orange that's on my brush and then really thick paint which is beautiful because we can play with that yellow coming through I don't know if you can see but it is coming out uh, on here play with this little plumage so patch of yellow there nice so that's where he's brightest is up here in this section okay so we don't need any blue in there okay and then we can add more orange down there down here is more orange oh it's lovely when it's the paint's this thick it's lovely okay and so much texture it almost looks like oil paints now Okay, so let's, I think, yeah, we need to put in his eye and then we will get his legs in for sure. Um, probably a small brush, maybe the smallest brush he's got right now, um, just so we can be meticulous with his eye. So here we go, I've got this small brush, I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm going to take a scoop of brown on the brush, that's how much I've got, and then a scoop of blue. Um, so dark brown and dark blue together will make black, as black as we want it to be. If you've been watching for a while you'll know that I tend not to use black sometimes, like I think uh, I was teaching how to paint puffins and they've got a lot of black running through, but black's very hard it's a hard color especially in acrylics um, so it's nice to have all the nuances of the shade of black like the, t the different shades of black that you can create with the browns and the even reds and blues without it having that big dominant black presence so there we go I've just made dark brown dark blue got it on my brush now let's have a look where his eye is. Eye's actually quite big, isn't it? And if I put my hand here, I'm just resting on um, wet paint. That's fine. Again, have a look at the picture. Have a look at my hand, but <laughs> but I'm not guaranteeing that my eye will go in the right place either. So let's just try. Maybe I have to start again as well. It's a big eye. Very big eye. It comes down. Yeah. And it comes maybe even bigger. Gosh, it's a big eye. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it's probably bigger than you think actually. So just think about that as you paint it. Okay, I don't want it to be too big, but yeah. Does it even get bigger? Does it even come down bigger? Just trying to gauge where it is at the bottom of that beak as well. I'm trying to gauge, there it is. Um, so the point here and then it comes down, it matches the bottom of your beak, okay? Yeah, that would be about it. And then it has a little point there, and then, gosh, it's very big, this eye. Okay. Maybe that's too big. I don't know. 
I'll know once I've put in all the detail and plumage. Right, whilst we're there, let's think about his legs. So what I'm going to do is take that black, same brush, black on the brush. I'm adding a touch of blue that's on my mixing palette here. And then they're kind of purple, these legs. So I'm taking that dark black, added blue, added red, and we're going to make them like purple, a bluey purple. And then I've added white. Okay, here we go. It's like a lavender colour. Yeah, I think like a dark lavender colour. So a little touch of red, blue and white into that should make it. What happens as well, um, he's backlit, so he's kind of like, which means either side of his legs is lit up and then the bit facing us is the darkest bit. We have got the lightest bit on our brush, so we can add, make it 3D by making it darker. Okay, follow the picture, follow my brush. I'm going for this leg first. Oh, that's my hand shaking. Um, the angle, so we come, he comes down. Oh, that's probably too much of an angle. Is that? Maybe. See, mistakes happen, right? I'm bringing it down. There we go, that's the angle. Doesn't matter, even if he's a bit pigeon toed. No one will know. One leg. And the other leg is about. Oh, where is it now? I'm seeing it where it is in relation to that eye as well, so it's kind of we're bringing it here. And again, we're trying to match that angle. Ooh. This is with me painting an angle, my brush is going all over the shop. There you go, that's it's got wonky legs, I know, but we'll refine it and make it better. And then his feet are so he's got one little, it is like a pigeon toe, one that sits here and comes over here. So make sure he's resting on that bench and he's got his feet firmly on the top. And then this one is you can copy the picture, you can copy my brush, it's just again matching the bench over here. Just the feet are different, which is nice. And then it comes over the bench there. And this one comes over the bench there. If you need to make your feet bigger, play around with the proportions. You'll know if they're too small or too big. Okay. How's that? Right, so what's on our brush? We've got this purpley colour. Let's just bring some of this plumage out on the right hand side where it's darker. using this brush still so now we can just start getting into the nitty gritty of his detail okay still don't panic we've got a lot more work we can do on this painting so now I'm adding to that lavender mix I've now gone darker so I've gone more or less back with dark brown dark blue um, to make a really dark brown and I'm just looking at his feathers over this side where we can then start drawing those ones in I'll put him down there and bring that down beautiful oh he's coming to life wonderfully mr robin that's it bring that shape out there so it can come down <laughs> uh and we'll come down that side bring out that the dark and don't worry because we can come over the top of the white let's just bring him down all the way down until we get to his point here little wing feathers okay that's him drawing in there his beak as well let's think about his beak it's got tones of brown through it I'm just bringing that up 
in um, through there just put some detail underneath the beak it's going to be darker if you need to go back to your dark and just add dark brown dark blue we can get that black through there again just adding that through to make him darker underneath his beak he's also got a little section here tiny little dash of black hopefully you can see that and it kind of comes on the top of his beak as well bringing out that bit there um okay and also now we've got this dark on our brush right we can then he's got little specks of um just tiny little flecks of this dark coming through we can add that through in this section here do you see now it's like i'm on the tip of my brush and i am using it very gently very delicately and it's different so there's so many different ways you can use a, a brush so we've washed we've drawn in we've sketched and now we're just adding all this detail which we can use like a pencil just bringing that over there um what else let's just let's drop some dashes of black over here too bringing that through don't worry we're going to add white he will come i promise you he will come to life once we add this white through so just bring that darker color through so as a rule um we start with acrylics you start with the mid-tones and we put all that color through and then to refine the painting you go darker with your shades and then the last finishing touches are white and it's different to watercolour so watercolour you have to think about your white first of all and don't paint it uh, and you go gradually get darker whereas acrylics we kind of get lighter and the last colour we think about is white and it's not the first colour very interesting I have um, in mind actually um, to begin teaching in watercolours and exploring watercolours. I've also got some eco-friendly paints uh, that I want to demo in. Um, so very, uh, yeah, lots to look forward to actually. A lot for me to look forward to, but a lot for me to look forward to as well as we progress. Right, his legs. I know, I know his legs are a bit weird. Right, let's just give them a little definition with this dark. Um, we can bring some little shadow underneath his foot here so that he's sitting on something and then under here too so he's got a little bit of shadow happening he's got a little what are they like claws uh, I guess they would be claws <sighs> right and then like I said he's got the dark let's choose one side that's going to be dark so we're going to go under here with the darkest side of his leg so I'm bringing the dark down one side and then I'm going to bring it down so I brought it down the right of each side that would make sense to the right of each side bring out the dark and then the other side you can bring out with the highlights just to make it simple we could sit here and study these legs uh, but we just want the main thing I think is the texture in the feathers okay let's just have a little look at this bench while we're here and we've got now so you can now play with this dark through the bench I mean if you had time now bring out little like here do you see I'm going from left to right with that dark and bringing out proper detail um, oh. <laughs> which I probably will do once the cameras have stopped rolling and I can have full access to this painting is to go and bring out the planks here, the planks in this wood like this so have a play with that too um, but I'm going to be back to Robin okay so that's what you need to do on that bench to make that more lifelike you can also, you see there's a rim of white on top of the bench so use that as your highlight along the top um, but we're not going to sit here and paint a bench um, but that's how you can refine it 
dip it's just i'm just seeing what's happening in his eye okay i see in his eye now i'm just making sure make sure your eyes really dark once that's dry he's got a glimmer of white what we can also do is if you've got just lighten up i'm going back into my mixing pad i'm lightening up that brown slightly with what's in there which is like a lavender brown i'm just playing more with his plumage over here so now we've got this small brush you can add as much detail as you want to with all these different shades and tones of this um, coming out on his head and yeah now you're in your small brush play with it okay different shades of brown different shades of blue different shades of orange definitely through his breast um, what we're going to do is add the white um, we're going to add the white through. So I'm washing that brush. And I'm going to dip it into the water. And now I'm just going to go and take a big scoop of white onto my brush. But just rest it on the mixing pad just to get rid of some of it. Right. Okay. Water down the, uh, the paint. And then we're just going to start with this white. It, there we go. And then it will start he will start to come to life now do you see we're ready and there you are you'd given up hope you thought it, he was a failure and then suddenly the finishing touches and it will all make sense so sketchy with your brush however your style is you're going to hold the brush different to me it's like we all hold pens and pencils differently it's how i hold my brush especially when i'm teaching very loose you might be a little bit more rigid, you might be a bit more loose, we're all different. So, but we're just now adding all that white through, and he comes to life. And then he come. we've got white down this side. in his little white bit and remember just blend into what you've done already so bring it into that blue downwards over into the dark bits and then let's bring it over and again think about feathers so let's just get that very it goes up and over that brown Feather effect. Bring it down. And it's brilliant. So all that work you've been doing now, you're coming over the top, and you'll still see all those colours underneath. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to finish you off now with this white. I think the last finishing touches will be the yellow we're going to bring out that gorgeous yellow breast make sure that's the uh, finishing uh, it's almost like the focus for me i think the focus i would want is his gorgeous coloring of his breast and what else let's just bring some of that through here Do you see i'm holding the brush at the side very sketchy bringing it over that brown Too much white there. Uh, bring it through that blue. Just a little head there. Lovely. You can bring it around his eye. Making me smile. Um right, his beak. Let's just have a little look at his beak. Where has he gone? There he is. So just a touch of blue through that white. And we're going to highlight his beak very gently. And that line there, and then there's a line underneath that's black. It can be coloured in blue. Bring it down. And then uh, he's got a little patch of white in his eyes, like his little glimmer. <laughs> Look at him. Comes to life. There we go. 
Um, and then we're going to bring this bluey tone, whitey tone, um, <laughs> down the left of his leg. It doesn't matter, I think they've gone quite thick, but I'll probably paint, I can always paint over them if they are too thick. Bring out some of the highlights on his feet. On the top, so you put the shadow underneath, let's bring out some of that highlights on the top. And then the same over here. Here we're going to bring it down the left side, the light, and then his highlights on his feet. It's got that little toe there, top of that one, that there makes them more realistic. Else, I'm just seeing there's just more white coming up here. Let's bring it up slightly. Okay. Oops. So now I'm just thick white, right? I'm just bringing out the bits where I see a lot of white. Just bring that thick white, bring it into that red. Lovely. Oh yes, works, works. Okay. Where else? He's uh like I said he's backlit through here so we can bring out the the white highlight down the side of him. On that side. Um, also, that blue. Let's go back to the bluey white. So it's a pale blue, and we're just going to bring out the detail. It's a bit too white. I'm just bringing more blue through that, and then uh, still a bit too white. Let's put the blue through here. It's better. The top of his head is lit as well, so we can actually see his shape. There we go. And we'll bring that down into that dark and what we've done and incorporate that into it. Just following his shape. Making sure that's a nice bluey colour on there. And not too white. And there we go. And he's got a lovely head down there. And then I'm just bringing out more of that blue down here. I'm bringing it onto the top of his wing. Okay. okay. So yeah, just incorporate some of that blue through. So I'm just sketching it through what we've done already, just so we don't have a really stark blue outline and like kind of just um, blending it in towards his eye. Like nice little feather marks with your brush. Just bringing it, it comes slightly under that eye. We're just bringing out the detail now. Under that eye. And just a little bit around. It just how, depends how realistic you want it to be. Like I can spend hours now like refining it. But if you're happy, um, you should be happy, hopefully. Love to see these robins. Do please post them, send them to me. And let's just bring that over the top of his wing. That's all that blue. Okay. Yeah, so you could spend hours like now, we can go back and add more blue through here, play with all that texture. I mean, if you want to now pause and just have a little play. That bench, you can bring out all more detail. You can bring out more of this blue through the bench, which I might do. Like here, it just touches that blue, but go back and put all your little panels through there too. Um, I just want to finish you with the yellow on the breast. 
So what we're going to do is use this brush. I've just washed that brush, washed the white off. I'm going to go into the water, just take up a big scoop of yellow. But we're going to add white to the yellow, which will make it brighter. So here we go. I'm over here and I've got white and yellow together. And let's see, that should then show up a lot there. Um, and he's just, that's our focal point. I'm just going to bring the attention to the viewer here. And let that be where the viewer rests in their eye. Hopefully they might come up to his eye as well. He's got a lot of character, isn't he, this guy? Uh, so thick paint, just bringing it through. This, thick, this yellow can be really thick. And then... Bring it down this side too. A lot of yellow going on down that side. Oh yeah. And then just the Robin Red breast. And then you can go back, you can add more red through there. I'm just adding touches of yellow through here just to brighten them up around here. I think he's got some through his face as well. And then touches here. Don't be afraid of that colour. Very bold, but it works because you've got all the blue going on to tone it down. All right. And he's got some more around his eye. Going up. Oh, sorry. I will refine that afterwards. I'll just. Oh no. On the even side as well. <laughs> Tidy that up afterwards. Uh, I'm seeing on the screen as well, I think he, he needs another like strip here to bring him down. Let's just put some, there we go, that looks better I think. Yeah, that's better. That's all the yellow down there, we can bring out touches of yellow his little plumage here oh he's looking fine isn't he and then just touches I'm just going straight into the red just bringing out the red down there if you are worried then you can tone it down with the blue I'm being brave with this red so I'm just bringing it out here and loving the colour yes just being bold so thick is that paint? Okay. Lovely. <laughs> He's making me smile, which is a good thing, right? Um, means we've done a good job. More red through there. Oh, being bold with that colour today. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day there for you guys, right? So, that's you. You've learned how to paint her Robin. Um, you can now spend as long as you want to refining him. The background, uh, literally get creative with your background. I could show you how to do it, but that's how I want to do it. And you can explore paint. In, you can put leaves, you can put twigs. You can put butterflies, you can literally put snow, you can put a castle, you can put mountains. I want you to explore uh, your own creativity in this background. All right, finish your bench off, you can put some white bits through it. And that's you. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed teaching today. Um, if you're feeling brave enough, please post your pictures to Haven House Arties. It's A Art and then double E S on Facebook, Haven House Arties, uh, post it in the Facebook group and if not you can send them to me by email or yeah by email info at havenhouseart.com. Uh, so look out for further recording, sign up to the newsletter to receive notifi notifications when I do uh, more recordings and remember that you can take part in live painting classes once a month when you can actually paint along with other people and you can ask me questions and receive feedback 
um, to look at on the website today. So those are all in the shop section and in the art class section of the website. Okay, I'm going to leave you for now. It's uh, yeah, we're in late January here in the far north of Scotland. It's just what time is it? Quarter past four. It's getting dark and we're in the middle of a storm as well. So I know that winds are going to pick up and it's going to be howling around the house tonight. Um, so sending you lots of love. See you next time. Bye.